Abubakar Malami, Attorney General of the Federation AGF, rejected a move by Katrina Lang, UKI Commissioner to Nigeria, to discuss the arrest of Namde Kano, Biafra Separatist leader. When they both met on Thursday, the cable understands. Kano, who is also a British citizen and leads the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, was repatriated to Nigeria this week after evading arrest for almost four years. It was almost mostly the UK or it was mostly in the UK from where he runs Radio Biafra, IPOP's radio station with which he often engages in fierce monologues preaching his separatist cause. Dean Hullock, a spokesperson of the British High Commission, had earlier told the cable that the UK is in the process of seeking clarification from the federal government regarding its arrest. But the UK's move to weigh in on the matter hit a brick wall where Malami hosted lying in Abuja. The cable learned that the British High Commissioner to Nigeria raised the issue of Kano's arrest, but the minister quickly rebuffed her. A source familiar with the matter said he told Lang that that matter was not part of the agenda and we are not going to discuss it. There's little official information about Kano's arrest other than Malami's statements than the IPOB leader was intercepted through the collaborative efforts of Nigeria Intelligence and Security Services. However, the cable learned that the separatist leader was lured to an African country with a promise of cash donations and was then picked up. Mm -hmm. Security sources informed the cable that he was tracked through some members of IPOB who were recently arrested following a massive military operation in the southeast. His trial was alleged terrorism, treasonable felony and illegal possession of firearms is scheduled to resume at the Federal High Court in Abuja on July 26. Other highlights of the meeting between Malami and Lang, according to Uma Gwandu, the minister's spokesman, was the former insistence that Nigeria was right to ban Twitter. The ban was triggered in the past by how Kanu used the microblogging platform to often attack Nigeria and the federal government during his frequent broadcast about the Biafra agitation. The minister was quoted as saying that Nigeria's interest is paramount above other considerations and that if you want to operate as a business entity in Nigeria, you must do so within the context of Nigeria laws. He do also discuss bilateral issues on assets recovery, anti-corruption crusade, amendments of the Electoral Act, counter-terrorism efforts, and the military and petroleum industry bill, which the National Assembly passed on Thursday with three percent. Well, I think uh, the UK is not serious to discuss the matter because if you are if you are serious to discuss the matter, it's a, it will be a different thing entirely. It will be all about the arrest of Namde Kanu, not that a meeting was scheduled for something else and you are chipping it in. No, that means you are not serious because this whole thing, it, you have to give it the seriousness it deserves. If you are to discuss the matter, you have to discuss the matter and the matter must be concerning the meeting that you have scheduled, not that a meeting will be scheduled for something else and you are going to be chipping it in. It shows to me, on my own part, that they are not serious. If they are serious, they will go for the, the, the issue, the matter, properly not trying to use a warm a stone to key how many beds so that is just the way i see it well no matter what kano will be victorious at last malami and his entities will fail well irrespective of anything kano is a great leader to tomorrow and uh, a lot of people are really thanking malami for not even giving audience to the uh, UK commissioner, uh, British AI commissioner to Nigeria, not giving him, giving her an opportunity to even discuss uh, that matter. Like I said, to me, let them discuss the matter. Let them have a meeting based on that. So that matter will be discussed. That matter will be discussed. And that was why he said, you know, that, is not, that was not the reason why they were there. That was not the reason why they were there. It is interesting that it is not only the Yorubas that are cowardice. If the IPOB who are quick to see the Yorubas as cowards, 
they have now seen that it is not all the time you play the lion maybe they will now know why the yoruba back pedal most times so hip hop igbos can also be cowardice if they can turn kano in, in for arrest because of a situation that was out of their control the yorubas have always found themselves in such situations couple of times let us think before we condemn people's actions because oftentimes than not these days it happens with unexplainable reasons you know people always talk about uh, our independence that we didn't even get independence in the first place because i i don't know why this whole thing where it's 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 it started having a problem because the reason why you see that some part of the country cannot even do some things how come that power was giving so much to these people what led to what and because you see that everybody just quiet what is happening it is the masses who do not even care or know what was was arranged or was agreed upon right from onset those are the people that say we don't even care what happens but in as much you are telling us this is supposed to be a federating unit everybody has equal right that is what the people are running with but when you see all these uh, elected uh, officers they always quiet as if there's something they know that the masses do not know and it has never even been bad like this because it is worry that is now making everybody everybody has to go back to history to know what and what happened because before now even the, for the fact that they remove history from our curriculum uh, for children to be learning what their history is all about where they are coming from where they are and where they are going to uh but at least as at that time before buari came on board before he came on board things were not as bad as this but buari is like he, he, not that it's like buari came with an agenda because the agenda of this uh, fulani s men who are killing people on a daily basis and he does not care about it all he wants to do is to give people land and it's becoming clearer and glaring it's becoming glaring that they don't mean well for this country. One is, one is that they are accusing him of a nepotism and lopsidedness. And he's not hiding it. He's not hiding it at all. We saw a um, a broker's, a press statement that a Malami made. He was even doing it in Awusa. Why? And when I saw him there, I saw the IG of police and some other people. IG of police. Definitely, you cannot see the reason why they are choosing themselves. Buari has been choosing the weather for uh, the northerners. Let me just put it that way because they understand their language. Why would you want to discuss such a, 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 a sensitive matter and you are using an Aousa to say it later? You know, that was what it was. He used first before using a, a English. What does that tell one? What does that tell one? It's very, very unfortunate. So guys, let's hear your opinion and have your take on this. Thank you.